Hey everyone, FinTech here. And today we're going to talk about seven ways you can earn over $125 per day through completely passive income. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I used to dream of building a money printing machine that would just churn out $1 bills all day so I would never need to work again. Well, while that might not have happened, I have found several ways to achieve the same effect. By leveraging your time and effort now, you could easily set yourself up to basically have a passive income source that essentially prints money while you're free to live your life however you want. Whether that be to retire early, move to a more fun career, or just have more money showing up in the bank every day without any extra work on your part. After all, the average millionaire has seven sources of income and no one has time to work seven active jobs at once. Now to be very clear, passive income does not mean no effort income. Unfortunately, the only way to get that is to be Jeff Bezos's kid. But what it does mean is once we get the money machine built, it can then run passively and fund our lifestyle with no additional effort. And no, I'm not talking about Bitcoin mining, although that could actually be an option. So let's start with the simplest possible option. Probably the easiest way to set up a source of passive income that almost anyone can do is through dividends. All you have to do for this is set up a brokerage account, buy a dividend paying stock, and boom, you have passive income. You see, when you buy a stock in a company, you actually own a piece of that company. So for certain stocks, let's say AT&T, whatever profit they have left at the end of each quarter, they pay that money out to their shareholders in the form of a dividend. AT&T in particular pays a pretty high dividend of over seven and a half percent right now. So for the stock, we can work backward to see how much we would need invested in the company to make $125 per day. So $125 divided by 0.075 comes out to $1,666.66. But we want to earn that every day. So we would need to multiply by 365, meaning we need just under $610,000 invested in AT&T to earn on average $125 per day. Now that sounds like a lot, but it's actually a very achievable number. Let's say every day you bought a giant Chipotle cheesesteak from Jersey Mike's, which is delicious by the way, not sponsored. That would cost you $13 per day. But then let's take that $13 per day and invest it all into AT&T. Then every time one of those dividends is paid out, we're gonna reinvest those back into the stock as well. Well, after 30 years of investing, you'd be sitting on enough money to get paid $125 completely passively forever just in the form of dividends. And that's assuming the stock price doesn't go up, which could reduce that amount of time by a lot. The only downside with dividends is they usually only pay out quarterly or annually. So instead of getting a nice clean $125 per day, you'd be getting one big lump sum every few months. But there are now dividend investments where you can get paid out weekly, such as the weekly ETF that pays out just 0.02% every week, but that adds up to a total of a little over 1% per year. Dividends is probably the easiest passive income option if you wanna get started right now. The next easiest option for generating passive income would be to invest in a REIT or a real estate platform like Ground Floor. A REIT or real estate investment trust is kind of like a stock that you can invest in, only instead of buying into a company, you're buying into a fraction of a bunch of real estate deals. These deals can pay you out almost as if you actually own the real estate, but without the hassle of needing to own actual rental property. The big advantage here is the real estate market is not tied directly to the stock market. So while your dividend portfolio might be down more years or up during others, ideally your REIT investments will hold you through the down years in stocks. One of the other benefits of REITs is that what they pay you is usually a mix of dividends, which is taxed just like normal income, and capital gains, which are taxed at a much lower rate. Capital gains taxes are paid out at 0% taxes if you make under $40,000 per year, 15% if you make under $440,000 per year, or 20% if you make more than that, which is definitely preferable to paying income tax on those gains, which could go as high as 37%. Another bonus option, which is related to REITs, is using a real estate platform like Ground Floor. I did a review of them a few months back, but essentially Ground Floor lets you loan money out to people who are flipping real estate and then receive interest back on your loans. So I actually lent out $20 each to two people flipping houses, 
one in Georgia and the other in Fort Worth, Texas. They took the money, used it to buy and renovate the property, and then when they sold it, they paid me back around 10% in interest. All I had to do was decide where to put the money and it passively started gaining interest when I lent it out. But maybe you want to go one step past investing in someone else's project and you want to keep all of the income your investments generate for yourself. Well, in that case, the third source of passive income is real estate rentals. Now on this one, you have to be careful because it can be a passive income source if done right, but it can become very active if done wrong. So for example, right now I own a condo that I bought a few years ago and I rent it out to generate income on the side. So just to give you some numbers for my own place, I right now spend around $2,450 per month between my mortgage, property taxes, HOA costs, and insurance to own my condo. I can rent it out for probably around $3,200 per month right now, which means that each month it's rented, I would earn $750. Now some of that needs to be put aside to account for replacing stuff, repainting damaged walls, stuff like that. So let's say $550 a month in profit. Now for me, I currently live in the condo, so I just house hack by renting out my extra room. So I'm not getting the full amount I could be for renting out the whole thing if I didn't live here but also renting out my extra room has basically been completely passive. Whenever someone moves out, I can pay a cleaning service to come and do a deep clean. I already have photos in the description of the place that I can post online. And then I'm just very careful about picking really good tenants. The way rentals can quickly turn from passive to active is if you have a lot of repairs or you get a really bad tenant. And those two things could go hand in hand. In that case, you could quickly waste time going back and forth with your tenant over unpaid or late rent or by constantly needing to fix things. I think the best solution for that is to run your rental like a business. Maybe charge slightly below the market rate so that you have a lot of tenants to choose from and find a good handyman who can deal with small fixes for you. Or if you want to go fully passive, just hire a rental management company to run the whole thing. They will usually charge you around 10% of the monthly rent as a management fee, which I personally think is too high, but they will deal with finding tenants, fixing issues, and as long as you have enough cash that you can take a 10% hit and still be profitable, this could be a good option for you. The next source of passive income you could generate is by renting out different items that you own. Maybe you don't have the tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars needed for a down payment on a house, but chances are most people own something of value that they could rent out, like a car or even their furniture. In the same way that you can put your house on Airbnb, you can also rent out your car on a service like Turo, where people essentially pay you to borrow your car for a time. Now it has some similarities to Uber or Lyft, but with the benefit of being completely passive for you. On their website, Turo notes how this makes it so you can actually scale this as a business if you want by renting out more and more cars over time. Unlike with an active side hustle like driving for Uber, where your time is always a limiting factor. There are also multiple apps and websites that offer the similar service like hire a car, get around, or travel car. Similarly, you can even rent out items like a parking space on curb flip, storage space on Neighbor, your bike or snowboard on Spinlister, or even your clothes on a site like StyleLend. There are really too many options to list them all here, but just think of something valuable that you own that maybe you don't use very often, and chances are there's a service out there where you can rent it. This is an easy way for pretty much anyone to start generating some passive income, and you can do it without much upfront investment of effort or money, which makes it kind of unique on this list. But maybe you're not interested in letting other people use your stuff, or you don't want to invest a lot of money into generating passive income. Well, that's where we start to get into the more time and effort-based methods of generating passive income. So number five on my list is YouTube. Now wait, I know what you're thinking, that's not passive, you have to constantly make videos to make money on YouTube. But that's only partially true. You see, there are two types of videos on YouTube. You have your flash in the pan videos that generate a lot of short term views, and this might be a video on some recent scandal in the news or something happening in the stock market. These types of videos require you to constantly churn them out to stay on top of the latest trends to make money. But the other type of video is an evergreen video. This stays relevant to people for years after it's made. A good example of this is Nate O'Brien. He went on a podcast called The Iced Coffee Hour and talked about how he makes around $50,000 per month without really posting much on his channel. I can pull my ad revenue for you. It's um, 
So I'll just tell you guys, it's, it's like 50, a little over 50,000 a month. And we can hear from him how he does this in his own words. Um, All right, here we go. Yeah, my wow. strategy is always, like I haven't posted that's in ins- three weeks crazy. maybe. Yeah. I, I don't even know. Because not only that, but you've been gaining subscribers, <laughs> a consistent amount of subscribers by not posting. Yeah, um, and that's Why? just because of the yeah. content that I make is I really try to make it to be evergreen long-term content that I know I can rank for. He makes a lot of evergreen content that just gets views when people search for things like how to invest for beginners or how to save money. Now, obviously not everyone is going to have a million subscribers and be bringing in tens of thousands of dollars a month, But if you invest the time upfront to make content that people consistently watch, you can easily earn a few hundred to a few thousand dollars a month pretty passively. But maybe you're not comfortable in front of a camera or what you wanna talk about is a little more specialized than what you can really get successful with on YouTube. Well, another great option and number six on our list is to write an ebook. Now, this is one of those options that always seemed really intimidating to me until I saw some of the successful eBooks out there. Unlike with a traditional novel or a printed book, I've seen people with eBooks that are literally 15 to 20 pages long that make a killing by simply presenting information that's normally hard to find in a clear and concise way. It's not hard to find examples of people doing this online. Here's a Penny Hoarder article about a guy who made $2,000 off of a book that he wrote in a few days while on a break in the mountains of Colorado. You can use a service like Amazon's Kindle Direct Publishing where you self-publish your book and then receive a percentage of the sales for that book. Now, how much Amazon takes out of that for royalties is a little complicated since it depends on the price of the book. So if you charge between $2.99 and $9.99, you'll get 70% of the sale back. So a $9.99 book will net you $6.99 in your pocket. If you charge outside this range though, Amazon only pays you 35%. So if you sold a book for $10 instead of $9.99, you'd ironically get paid way less money, only $3.50. The real key here will be to write a book that A, offers value to people, ideally on a topic that you have a decent amount of knowledge in, and B, you know how to market the book to get people to buy it. After all, no one will read your book if they don't know it exists. But once you get the book written and the marketing in place, you can sit back and let the royalties roll in passively. Which leads us to our seventh, and dare I say, most controversial way of earning passive income, offering a video course. Now, online courses have a reputation for being scammy, selling you junk information, and just constantly trying to upsell you to get more money out of you. But there are ways to sell your knowledge via a course in a much more legitimate way. For example, when I was studying AWS, I took a course on the app Udemy, which was super well made, and I think I paid the guy over $100 for it. But it was worth it for me because it helped my professional growth. I've also taken other courses on topics like programming or machine learning online, that were basically like college classes at one one hundredth of the price. If you have any kind of expert knowledge, you can create your own course and host it on a platform like Udemy or Skillshare, or you can host it yourself on a platform like Teachable. The fact is more people than ever prefer to have information presented to them in a video format that combines audio with text with imagery, all at the same time. So this may be the most profitable way for you to present information. Now this will be a very time and effort intensive task up front. You'll need to write out your plan of what to talk about, film everything, edit it together, market it. But once you complete those tasks, you can have a course that you can sell pretty much indefinitely. And it doesn't require too much money up front. You can film on your phone if you want to, which is what I did for about a year on this channel. People always say teachers are underpaid and I completely agree. But these platforms make it so anyone can be a teacher and there's no limit on how much money you can make. It all depends on how good the content is and how well you market it. So to recap, my seven ideas for making passive income. You can one, invest in dividend paying stocks to start earning passively right now. Two, you can invest in either a REIT or a platform like Grounds Floor to gain fully passive real estate income. Three, you can invest in buying and renting out real estate knowing that the upfront cost will be made back in passive income later. Four, you can rent out items you already own, like your car, your clothes, or your parking spot. Five, you can start a YouTube channel. If you grow it right, this can produce amazing passive income as we saw with Nate O'Brien. Six, you can write an ebook. And seven, you can create and sell an online course. All of these ideas have one thing in common, which is to invest upfront so you don't have to later. That investment can be time, money, effort, or a combination of the three. 
But if you have any one of those, you can put it to work to start building passive income today. But if you have your own ideas for generating passive income, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.